Today I want to talk to you about editor utility widgets because they are a really powerful and useful thing to know how to make and how to use because you can literally program anything you want and create your own custom uh, panels just like the rule settings here, the level details. All these panels that you see here, you can make your own functionality for a panel like that. Just throw it into your workspace and automate actions that you oftentimes do like duplicating over actors or in the case of what we're going to be doing today uh, a simple panel that will allow you to add a component to a or multiple different actors at a time so let's get into that we can make an editor utility widget by right clicking and then going down here to editor utilities there we have the editor utility blueprint that's for utility actions that's a little bit different from what we're doing today and we have utility widgets that allows you to make these panels there we have the differentiation between a stack box this allows you to stack the elements of your widget either horizontally or vertically and a grid panel this allows you to put them in a sort of grid kind of working like an excel spreadsheet today we're going to just go with the stack box because it's a little bit more straightforward and uh, we'll call this add components and if we save that and we right click on it we can see we can run this editor utility widget and if we do that it gets added to our screen somewhere in my case right here and it is empty we can't do anything with it at all so let's open it up where you can see it also has a run utility widget here uh, as a button but aside from that it is just kind of a normal widget that you're probably used to making for in your game but this is not going to be in your game this is going to be in your engine instead so we want to make something that allows me from a drop down menu to pick a component and then just select a bunch of actors and add that component to all of those actors so let's start by going into the graph here and make a variable for the component to add which will be of type actor component and it will be a class reference and that's really all that we need to do in here for now so let's go back into the designer and since this is an editor utility widget uh, we have a bunch of special buttons like editor utility editable text instead of a normal editable text and everything else also is marked as a special editor utility version but we also have a couple of things that we don't usually really get access to which is things like the details view we can show the details view of any object that we want maybe an object that we have selected maybe an object that we are searching for or whatever and view it in this panel in our case we actually want to see the detailed view of this thing itself so let's add this into our stack box i'm also going to set the stack box to being a vertical so that it stacks top to bottom I'll set this details view to be aligned to the uh, left so that it doesn't fill the entire view. So that's a little bit ugly. And right now it says undefined objects. So what we need to do is we need to go into the graph and in event preconstruct, we need to give it a value of the objects that is going to be uh, showing. So we can just set objects and under the view category, set objects, we can give it the object that it should be displaying. Now, in our case, of course, it's just going to display uh, the contents of itself. So we just give it a reference to itself. And then as long as the component to add is marked as instance editable, we go back into the designer and we see suddenly we have the entire details panel of this widget itself uh, visible, which is maybe a little bit overkill because we don't need to set that preview background or whether or not it's focusable. All that stuff is a little like unnecessary. So what we can do is we can filter on only specific properties uh, to show. So let's go in and copy the name of this variable. And in properties to show, we just paste that in. And then when we compile, we can see only the components to add variable is now showing. We can even give it a default value like any variable. So uh, in my case, I think I want to give it a inventory component as its default value. This is in my inventory project file from my, from my inventory series and now you can see it even populates that with the proper default value and if we compile and we go back into the third person example map our add component panel now has this drop down menu and we can pick any components that we want from the list of components that's only half the battle though because now we need to make a button 
uh, which is fairly easy because we can just add a editor utility button and we add that under uh, the last one. We again align it to the left so that it doesn't fill the entire screen. And we just put in a, a quick little text which will say something fairly straightforward like components to actors. And then back in the graph, we can, uh, with the button selected, just add an on clicked event. And here we start doing the magic. There's a bunch of different things that we uh, can do and a bunch of subsystems that we can use for this. There's a lot to explain there and a, a lot of potential functionality to go over. Today, we're just going over some of the basics and just building something simple. So one of the most fundamental and basic and also important things is the get selected actors function. And this gets you the actors that you have currently selected. So you can select multiple actors at a time in your viewport as an array of actors to do something with. So this is going to be great because all the actors that I have selected, I want to add that component to. Then we can pour each loop over those. And from there, if you just want to do this like quick and dirty, uh, you can just add components by class and then hook this up and hook up the world context objects and call it a day. But that is not ideal because this will add the component as if adding it through the construction script. And I'll show you real quick why that is not ideal because this will work. It's just not very useful. So let's just take this static mesh that we have over here. I'm gonna go into its details panel real quick. We have the component to add set to the inventory component. I will add components to inventory. It's misspelled, I just realized. I click on it uh, and you might need to like click back onto it in order to actually uh, see the newly added component. But then when we click on it, it says, components created by user construction scripts can only be added in the blueprint. So first and foremost, we can't edit it. And if I try to delete this now, I also cannot delete it. It acts as if this is being added through the construction script instead of through this adding menu, which I mean, obviously that's not what we want. So we're gonna do this in a slightly different way. And for that, we're going to first get the sub object data subsystem. Unreal has a bunch of these subsystems that contain a bunch of extra functionality uh, that you can't just get access to right from your blueprint graph. But pulling off of this, uh, we now have a bunch of extra functions that we can use. And one of those functions will be gather sub object data from instance. So the context will be the array element here. So that's every individual actor. And that's going to get you the sub object or the components of your instance of every actor that you have selected uh, in an array. And what we want to do is we want to just get a reference or technically I suppose a copy might also work to just element number zero, because we want to add our component uh, to the root. You can always move these around after you've added them in very individual cases if you really need and want to. Then with the sub object data uh, subsystem, we can add a new sub object. And what we'll be adding is a bunch of parameters. We can split that structure pin. The parent handle is going to be the thing that we add the new sub object, the new component to. And then the new class will be our component that we're going to be adding. And now that we have it set up like this, we can actually uh, go and this thing is just going to have an undeletable inventory component now. So don't mind that. I'll go to this weird static mesh and add an inventory component to that. First and foremost, you immediately see that it gets updated. We don't have to click off and back onto it. And when we click onto it, we can actually add it like the inventory size and we like can construct the inventory and we can every thing that we can do with inventory that I've made in my inventory series, uh, you can do with this component. And I can also delete it fairly easily. And I can add any component that I want. If I want to add an error component uh, to this, uh, I can do that. I select an error component, add that, and boom, we have an error component added. And we can also, again, delete it. So let's add some box components to uh, a handful of actors at once. So now I have five actors selected. I'm going to add components to actor and you will see that it adds a box component to each and every one of these. But if I try to control Z, it, uh, it doesn't really remove them, which is a bit of an issue. So when we click on this thing, we want to begin a transaction. Uh, we can give it some context. Uh, adding components. And then the description will be the thing that actually shows up when you control Z. 
you know, in these little things in the bottom right of your screen, the text that you want to display there, you put into a description. So in this case, that would be components added. And then at the very end of this thing, so at the very end of the for each loop in this case, we can end the current transaction. And this makes it able to be uh, like undone and redone. So uh, once again, let's add uh, some inventory components to, well, maybe not inventory components, actually. Let's add spotlight components to a bunch of things, shall we? That'll be fun. And if I then press this button, uh, you'll see a bunch of spotlight components have shown up, but now control z -ing, I can remove them again as well. And now with control y I can actually redo them and add them back in as well. So uh, now we also have that functionality in there. As you can see, there's a bunch of interesting stuff that you can do with the editor utility widgets. This is only the beginning. In uh, my own project here, and I'm going to make a tutorial on this very thing uh, sometime in the near future as well, I have a utility widget that allows me to duplicate actors with an offset and a certain amount. So I can say, actually, I want 10 of this actor and I want to offset them in the Y direction by about a thousand units. And then I can say, okay, I want these to move to the left side. And then it adds 10 of them to the left side with a thousand units in between each one of them. And then it has all of them selected. And I want to say, actually, I want to also in their forward direction at 10 of them. And now I have a grid of all of them. It takes a little moment for them to spawn all of them in because it's a lot of them, uh, but it does spawn all of them in. Of course, it needed to have a bigger offset. So let's set this to a thousand as well. And I can even, before placing them in, make it draw debug boxes to see, uh, actually, is this good spacing? That's pretty good spacing. And then I can go back to actually spawning in the actors and it will spawn them in in the exact right positions. So this kind of thing can help prevent a lot of tedium because if I had to place all these by hand uh, in the exact right places, that would be kind of hellish. And an additive utility widget can really help you with that kind of stuff. So hopefully this shows you a little bit how powerful these things can be and it gets you excited to start tinkering with making them. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my cave student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 